am Nathan's younger brother, and he asked me if I wanted to preach today. I said, not really, but I could tell a story. <laughs> so here I am telling a little story about um, an area of the world where I worked a few years ago. Um, I, I used to work for ADRA in the country of uh, Myanmar or Burma. So here's a map of the world. And where that pin is, that pin is on Myanmar. I'll zoom in a bit closer. There's Asia. And uh, there's, there's a country of Myanmar here. So it borders China, India, Bangladesh, Thailand, Laos, and a bit of Thailand there down the bottom. Um, yeah, so this story comes from this country. Now, just to give a little bit of background of what that country is about, or how big it is, it has a population of about 60 million, so just under three times smaller, uh, bigger than Australia, population-wise. And it's also the biggest country in Southeast Asia. So it's bigger than Thailand and all those countries heading towards Indonesia, Australia. Um, yeah, the, the makeup of the religious, uh, well, the religion that people follow mainly there is, is Buddhism. Is 89% Buddhists, 4% Christians, which are made up of Baptists, 3% Roman Catholic, 1%. There's 4% Muslims, um, animists, and, and others. So... The story takes place in the southern part of Myanmar. I was there, I arrived on a Monday, and on Friday evening there was the biggest disaster they had ever had in known history of Myanmar. It was a big cyclone called Cyclone Nargis. Now, recently there's been a big cyclone in the Philippines, um, which caused widespread destruction. One good thing, well, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, is that in the Philippines, they're, they're used to having cyclones. They get on average at least 22 per year come through the Philippines. And so people know what a cyclone is, and when they hear the word cyclone, they know that they need to prepare. You don't know how bad it's going to be, but at least you have some warning and you need to prepare for it. So this cyclone which hit the Philippines was the worst in size for a long time. Um, but not so many people died as in this cyclone that hit Myanmar or Burma. Um, the cyclone, this is the, the trail of the cyclone. This is the southern part of, of Myanmar. Um, the, the former capital city, Rangoon, is here. So it went right straight through Rangoon. However, most of the casualties in a cyclone happen because of flooding, not because of the wind. Because when a cyclone happens, it lifts the sea, um, the surface of the sea. So this area through here is less than three meters above water. The cyclone normally co creates a swell of five to ten meters, and that's what does a lot of the damage. So these people did not have any warning that there was going to be a cyclone, and they never experienced a cyclone before. So there was a little bit of reports here and there. There's, there's a cyclone heading your way, guys. And that was it. They didn't know what to do. No, no information was given to them. When it hit, it killed more than 140,000 people. It was widespread destruction and devastation. To give you an idea of this destruction that took place, here's a satellite photo of before and after. So here's before, nice green, after, it's all underwater, or all being washed away, or a lot of damage has taken place. This photo was taken on May 5. The cyclone happened on May 3. So this is two days after the cyclone. And this happened, this was uh, two weeks before the cyclone. So there you can see the the... the, the the satellite image of the destruction, um, the type of destruction was, was this, is flooding everywhere. However, amongst this um, destruction and disaster, I'll just go back to this picture here, um, maybe this one here, there's an Adventist church down here, so this part of the map, called Online Gone, and I went to this church 
about six months after the cyclone, because I was working with ADRA and we were doing reconstruction of water supply facilities for these villages. Um, because it's a delta area, all the water is salt water. There is no clean, it looks like there's lots of rivers going through there. That's true, but these are tidal rivers, so it's, it's brackish water, kind of like the Gulf of, um, out here, the Spencer Gulf, yeah. <laughs> um, so there's no fresh water. The only way to get fresh water is during the monsoon season when a lot of rain comes, is to dig big dams and catch the water that falls vertically. You can't really catch any water that runs horizontally on the ground because it runs straight into the ocean there. So when the, the storm surge came up, it washed salt water into all these dams, no more drinking water. So we're going around pumping out these um, uh, big dams and getting fresh water to come back in because we had big desalination plants and that kind of thing to get drinking water before the monsoon rains came. It happened at the beginning of the monsoon, so we had to work quickly to pump out the water to get ready for when the fresh water fell down. Um, so that's the background for us doing that. Anyway, so at this place in Online Gone was the SDA church. And they told me the story of what happened during the storm. During the storm, it happened on a Friday evening of, of all times. Um, and it was in a village which was mainly a Buddhist village. And they were giving the Adventist church a very hard time about operating, functioning. They were confined to this one, um, it doesn't look like a church, it was a house, a two-story house. So the bottom floor is where the pastor lives and his family, and then the top floor is, was about as big as this room here. Um, and that's where everyone held the service on, on, on Sabbath morning. Um, I have a picture of the kids at church, there they are, singing at the front after Sabbath school. <laughs> Um, and that's the church. So during the storm, what happened was the storm surge came through the village and destroyed all the houses, all the buildings in the village, except this Adventist church. The water level rose up to the second floor, but it didn't cover the second floor. So all the church members were going, you know, the Friday night Vespers, often in other countries they have Friday night Vespers. So everyone was near the church, or was about to go to the church, or was in the process of it. They thought that the church was the strongest building, because most of them have only um, leaf houses. So all the Adventist church members went into the church. And their fellow villagers also, some of them came to a church and some of them didn't want to come to the church. But as the flood levels were rising, that was the only place that wasn't getting washed away. And people were wondering, why isn't it getting washed away? And as the storm was at its fiercest point, the, the other villagers, the Buddhists, told the Adventists, we saw angels circling around the church holding hands. We saw these angels of light circling around the church holding hands during the storm. We want to know more about who you are, what you believe, because you're the only worship facility that's still around. And today, the church is a, um, here's another picture of church. They don't have any seats, they just like to sit on the floor. Um, and there's a picture of the church that I took, and there it is today, still standing, and a lot more people in the village enthusiastic about, about the church and, and it's running in the village. So, no one, I don't know how to say it, like, it wasn't planned for, the people didn't, you know, do an evangelistic campaign or whatever, God just worked His work for His people in that time of distress and in that time of disaster. So, that's the story I want to tell you about, and just a text for us all to remember, um, the angel of the Lord encamps around camps all around those who fear him and delivers them. And that's found in Psalm uh, 34 verse 7. So that was the village that I was working, had the privilege of, of working in. And I worshipped there one Sabbath and that's the story they told me. So I just want to share that with you and hope that it um, blesses you in your day and your experience in walking with the Lord. Thank you.